Chapter 5, Literally Turning It Around So after the Christmas tree fiasco, I decided to meet up with Flynn and discuss what the message in the nativity scene meant. My connection that my parents had with the supposed Professor Carson gave the opportunity for him to come and visit me at home. As many do when they enter our house, Flynn's jaw dropped to the floor, practically. Wow, you guys really do Christmas to a point, I just shrugged. We then went to one of the game tables in the den right across from our giant Christmas tree. He had spread out a few maps and other documents, and then pulled out a wrapped scroll-looking thing from his satchel. Oh no, another scroll? Haven't I had my fair share of trouble with scrolls already? Anyway, he unraveled the scroll and started to explain it. Through my studies from the library, I found out that there was a supposed legend called Carol of the Crib. It is said that if you piece together certain lyrics, or even certain words from certain lyrics from Christmas carols, in the right order, you will be able to find the location of Jesus' crib. Well, that explains a lot, then. No wonder I've been hearing Christmas carols at weird points. Also, it explains why these weird phenomenons have been happening. Or maybe they're the same thing. You get my idea. So it's basically a puzzle. Uh, yes, and from what you've told me, this only explains that the legend is true and we can put a couple of pieces together, Flynn responded. He then moved his hand down from the bottom of the scroll, explaining the legend. There was a picture. It was two lines crossed, sort of like a high X and a circle underneath. This was one of the parts of the puzzle that Flynn didn't understand. Frankly, I didn't either, but I thought about it. Flynn looked at the picture closely and then saw it was detachable. Well, how about that? They had stickers all the way back then. He held it up to a light, but saw no change. He then set it down, and I looked at it again. Two lines that form in a high cross and a circle beneath them. Maybe the circle is a door, and the two lines form some kind of enclosure. This could be a symbol for a tomb. Also, crib means death place. This could be the explanation of where the tomb of Christ is. I was actually pretty proud of myself. I'd come up with a pretty good thought. You see, when my great-grandfather went hunting for the weird skull-looking thing, he had to go to the crib of Francisco de Oriana, otherwise known as his final resting place. Flynn agreed that the symbol could mean that, but could not make heads or tails of what the connection with the carols was. We were crossing into Easter territory here. I looked at the clock and noticed it was getting a little late. We welcomed Flynn to stay for dinner. Actually, my parents welcomed him. I was still a little annoyed that he thought he housed the Ark of the Covenant. After dinner, my parents then asked Flynn if he would like to accompany them on a tour around Main Street and see the other Christmas things that he and or I did not destroy. He agreed and I stayed behind, not only to try and figure out a little bit more about this supposed treasure, but to watch some good old-fashioned Christmas specials. Nothing like them. I mean, tons of entertainment. Charlie Brown Christmas, Santa Claus with an E, Polar Express, Christmas-themed TV episodes, Danny Wilcox and the Carol of the Crib. Whoops. Sorry about that. I would even watch a couple Hallmark movies, mainly for the stars. I mean, like, you know, Colin Ferguson from Eureka, Candace Cameron from Full House, Dean Cain from Lois and Clark, and of course, Danica McKellar from The Wonder Years. Ah, Winnie. I mean, Danica. I could stare into those big brown eyes forever and ever and ever. Whoa! <clears throat> Uh, sorry, got way sidetracked there. After a while of watching, there was a knock at the door. Remembering my encounter with my cousin Roger, I was cautious about opening the door, but was pleased to see Jack and a few steps back. Monica. Well, I wasn't expecting her. Oh no. Were they a thing? Oh, please no. Insert Fraser catchphrase. Oh dear God. Behind Monica was an additional person, a slightly smaller redhead. I welcomed them all in, and we went into the den, and I showed them the scroll, and I picked up the, quote, sticker again. I overheard this whole shebang with the manger and this librarian. Thought I'd ask a little more about it. Despite my thoughts about you, this is actually starting to pique my interest as well. That's why I brought my friend Samantha along. She seems to know a little bit about this. Pleasure, Samantha. Likewise. Do you know anything else about what you've gathered? Only from what I've learned up until now. You know, Jack, you were always digging around for stuff at St. Jane's. Can you make any sense of this? He picked up the sticker. It looked like, it looks like some kind of house, a funny looking ornament, a badly drawn tree. Okay, I get it. Wait, did you say badly drawn? He gave it back to me and I looked at it one more time. I started to move it with my finger so that the picture was turning and everyone crowded around me. 
we now saw that the circle was basically sitting in the top half of the X. I squinted a little bit more by the light of the fire in the fireplace and the lights on the tree. It then hit me. I don't know why I didn't see it before. I don't know why I thought crib meaning death place. Now I understand the connection with the carols. It's true that the word crib can be perceived as a resting place but it can also mean birthplace, like a baby's crib. This meant that the carol of the crib was a way of finding the manger of Jesus. That was the treasure. It's kind of funny how I just needed to look at this from a different point of view. I literally turned it around. I guess it kind of makes sense with the other clues, though. You know this design? Monica questioned. Yeah, it looks a lot like a drawing of a manger I did from a long time ago. I actually gave it away, and I know exactly where it is. Lucky for me, I was heading there tomorrow night. I had to let everyone know and meet me there at this thing tomorrow. I welcomed Monica and Samantha to come along, but Jack had other plans. I then stopped. This was a realization about this clue. I dashed to the window like that guy in the night before Christmas. What are you doing, Monica said. Slow down, buddy, said Jack. Are you attempting to howl at the moon, wondered Samantha. I didn't hear any of them. Wouldn't you know, the starry sky was clear and the clock read midnight. This answer really did come upon a midnight clear. How about your friend from the library? Should we give him a call? asked Jack. He was right. Should I really have Flynn share within this adventure? Find out in the next chapter, because the next clue that I knew we had to go to was going to be a living clue. Only from what I've learned up until now. You know, Jack, you are always digging around for stuff at St. Jane's. Can you make any sense of this? He picked up the sticker. It looked like, it looks like some kind of house, a uh, funny looking ornament, a uh, badly drawn tree. Okay, I get it. Wait, did you say badly drawn? He gave it back to me and I looked at it one more time. I started to move it with my finger so that the picture was turning and everyone crowded around me. We now saw that the circle was basically sitting in the top half of the X. I squinted a little bit more by the light of the fire in the fireplace and the lights on the tree. It then hit me. I don't know why I didn't see it before. I don't know why I thought crib meaning death place. Now I understand the connection with the carols. It's true that the word crib can be perceived as a resting place but it can also mean birthplace, like a baby's crib. This meant that the carol of the crib was a way of finding the manger of Jesus. That was the treasure. It's kind of funny how I just needed to look at this from a different point of view. I literally turned it around. I guess it kind of makes sense with the other clues, though. You know this design? Monica questioned. Yeah, it looks a lot like a drawing of a manger I did from a long time ago. I actually gave it away, and I know exactly where it is. Lucky for me, I was heading there tomorrow night. I had to let everyone know and meet me there at this thing tomorrow. I welcomed Monica and Samantha to come along, but Jack had other plans. I then stopped. This was a realization about this clue. I dashed to the window like that guy in the night before Christmas. What are you doing, Monica said. Slow down, buddy, said Jack. Are you attempting to howl at the moon, wondered Samantha. I didn't hear any of them. Wouldn't you know, the starry sky was clear and the clock read midnight. This answer really did come upon a midnight clear. How about your friend from the library? Should we give him a call? asked Jack. He was right. Should I really have Flynn share within this adventure? Find out in the next chapter, because the next clue that I knew we had to go to was going to be a living clue.